Hey everyone, and welcome. Today we're tackling a hard leet code problem called maximum frequency of an element after performing operations 2. It sounds intimidating, but we're going to break it down step by step until the logic becomes clear. Let's get started. So here's the task. We're given a list of numbers, an integer k, and another integer called num operations. Our goal is to make as many elements in the list equal to each other as we can. We want to maximize the frequency of a single number. So what are the rules? We have a budget of operations. For each operation, we must pick a unique position in the array. We can't operate on the same index twice. Then, we can change the number at that position by adding or subtracting any value up to k. Let's walk through an example. Imagine our numbers are 1, 4, and 5. k is 1. And we get two operations. A good starting question is, what number should we even try to create? Let's try to make everything a 4. Can we change the 1 into a 4? Well, that would require adding 3, but k is only 1, so that's not allowed. How about the 5? We can change 5 to 4 by subtracting 1. That's within our allowed range, and it uses up one of our two operations. The 4 that's already there costs us nothing. So we can end up with the list 1, 4, 4, achieving a frequency of 2 for the number 4. This seems like a good result. This leads us to the biggest challenge in the problem. What number should we target? There are infinite possibilities. We could try to make everything a 7, or 100, or negative 50. We can't possibly check them all. There has to be a more intelligent way to pick our targets. And here's the key insight. The best target value isn't going to be some random number. It's going to be closely related to the numbers already in our list. Think about it. A target is only useful if it's within k distance of at least one of our numbers. This suggests that the best targets are either the numbers we already have, or those numbers push to their absolute limits, which would be plus or minus k. These are our candidate targets or modes, as the editorial calls them. So here's our game plan. First, we'll sort the input array. This is a classic first step that often simplifies counting problems. Second, we'll create our list of all plausible candidate targets. Then, we'll loop through every single one of these candidates. For each one we'll figure out the maximum frequency we could get, if that was our goal number. Finally, we just keep track of the best result we see along the way. Okay, so how do we calculate the frequency for one specific target, let's call it T. It's a four-step process. First we count the total potential. How many numbers in our list are even in the right ballpark? Meaning, within K distance of T. Next, we count the freebies. These are the numbers that are already equal to T, and don't cost us any operations. The number of operations we'd need, is the potential count, minus the freebie count. We compare that to our budget num operations and take the smaller value. That's how many we can actually change. The total frequency for this target T is just the freebies plus the new ones we can afford to create. Just a quick heads up, we'll be walking through the solution using Python, but don't worry if that's not your main language. I'll be showing the full code for other popular languages like Java, C++ and JavaScript towards the end of the video. All right, here is the complete Python code that implements our strategy. It might look a little dense at first, but it follows the logic we just discussed exactly. Let's break it down into smaller, more manageable pieces. The first part is setup. As we planned, we sort the nums list. Then, we create a set to hold all our candidate target values. Using a set is just a convenient way to make sure we don't have any duplicate targets. We populate it with every number from our original list, and also every number shifted down by k. Next, we initialize our answer variable which we can call maxfrex to zero. The main part of our code is a loop that iterates through every candidate target we just generated. For each target, we'll run our calculation, and at the end of each loop we'll update our maxfrex with the highest value seen so far. Now for the clever part. Inside the loop, how do we efficiently count the numbers that are changeable? Since our nums list is sorted, all the numbers that can be turned into our target will form a continuous block. We can find the start and end of this block using binary search. The bisect left function finds the beginning of the range, and bisect right finds the end. The difference between these two positions gives us our total potential count. We do the exact same binary search trick again, but this time to find the free count, the numbers that are already equal to our target. After that, the math is simple. The number of operations needed is our potential count, minus our free count. Then we just take the minimum of that value, and our total operation budget. This tells us how many numbers we can actually afford to change. The last step inside the loop is to calculate the total frequency for this specific target. 
It's just the number of freebies we had, plus the number of new elements we could afford to change. We then update our overall maximum frequency if this new value is higher. Once the loop is done, we'll have our final answer. So how efficient is this? The time complexity is dominated by two things, sorting the initial list and the loop. Sorting takes n log n time. Our loop runs about two times n times, and inside it we do a binary search, which takes log n time. So the total time complexity comes out to big O of n log n. For space, we need to store our candidate modes, which in the worst case, could be twice the size of the input list, giving us big O of n space complexity. All right, before we jump into the other languages, I want to quickly show you a personal project I built to solve a problem that always drove me crazy. It's an app called My Daily To Do. My biggest frustration with every other to-do app was retyping the same things every single day. Go to the gym, review code, work on the daily leaked code problem. You know the drill. So I built my app around one simple but powerful idea, separating your routine tasks from your one-off tasks. Routine tasks, marked with the little refresh icon, automatically reset for the next day. One-off tasks, like ship new feature, get the little puff of smoke icon, and they disappear for good once you're done. This small change turns a dumb checklist into a smart scheduler. If that sounds useful, you can try it right now on the web, the link is in the description. And one more thing I want to make super clear. Right now, as a thank you for being an early supporter, the app is 100% free, there are no ads, and no subscriptions whatsoever. This means you get access to everything, including really powerful features like presets, which let you save entire task lists and load them with a single tap. Now down the road creating new presets will likely become part of a premium plan to help support the channel. But, and this is the important part, any presets you create now, while it's all free, are yours to keep and use forever. So it's the perfect time to check it out on the web, play with all the features, and build out your perfect setup at no cost. Alright. As promised, here is the full solution in Java. It uses the same logic, but we have to implement the binary search helper functions ourselves, as Java's built-in binary search doesn't quite work like Python's bisect. You can pause the video here to take a closer look at the implementation. Next up, here is the C++ version of the solution. C++ has wonderful functions in its standard library called lower bound and upper bound, which are perfect for our binary search needs. Again, feel free to pause and review the code. And finally, here is the solution in JavaScript. Similar to Java, we'll need to write our own helper functions for the binary searches. Hopefully, seeing it in a few different languages helps solidify the concepts. So let's wrap it up with the key takeaways. First, when faced with a seemingly infinite search space, always look for a way to narrow it down to a small, logical set of candidates. Second, never underestimate the power of sorting. It often enables much more efficient algorithms like binary search. Finally, breaking down the calculation into clear steps like potential, freebies and budget makes the logic much easier to implement correctly. If you enjoyed this problem and want to keep practicing, the learning doesn't have to stop here. I've organized all my video solutions into handy playlists. Whether you're looking to grind through more lead code easy, medium or hard problems, or you want to master a specific topic like sliding window or dynamic programming, I've got a playlist for you. It's the perfect way to focus your study sessions. Go to the playlist tab and find a playlist that fits your goals. Also, if you're looking for even more lead code problems beyond the daily challenge, I've started a second channel called Leak Code Unlocked. It's where I'll be posting solutions to a ton of other problems, so if you're serious about your interview prep, be sure to check it out. The link is in the description below. Hope this Leak Code solution breakdown made sense. If it helped, give that like button a click, maybe subscribe for more, or drop a comment if you have questions. Make sure to turn on the notification bell so you know straight away when I upload a video because I upload videos daily. This channel doesn't make any money from sponsorships or ads yet, so if you're feeling generous, there's always the Boba Fund. Keep coding and I'll catch you in the next one.